Now we have come to the ending of the book. Let's say you have the site the way you want it, and you want to publish to the web. Boy, I just can't get my words right sometimes. Um, so how do we publish to the web? Well, we've been working with the local site. Remember, we created our site folder, poetry site. We called it my um, my web page. Is that what we called it? Let me make sure of the name here. We called, yeah, my website work, and this was the poetry site we created in here. All our associated files were in that folder, which Dream Re Dreamweaver references. All our flash videos that we were going to use, um, all the pictures we were using, um, any um, any other pages within the site, information page, for instance. Um, we did a um, test for class, if you remember. Um, behavior test, layout design. So everything is in one folder. Now, now we are going to deal with the remote site. So we have local and we have remote. You can do a testing server also, but we're not going to get into that. So when you deal with a remote site, this is the server that people are going to be accessing to see these pages. And they normally mirror one another. So that's why you create everything on the local and then transfer it all to the remote site or server. Now how you transfer that um, is up to you. Some of the common ways to transfer is FTP um, over a local network, web-based distributed authoring and versioning, RDS, that's Remote Development Services, or Microsoft Visual Source Safe. But we're going to only discuss one of those, one of the most reliable and well-established ones, and that's FTP. How do we FTP all our data to that site? Well, first thing we're going to do is go to Poetry. This is under Andre's Files, and then the Files tab. And we're going to go to Manage Sites. This is our site, poetry site. We're going to click edit. And there we see our local info that we put in there originally. Now, make sure, oh by the way, make sure the advanced tab is what we're dealing with. Under remote info. Now here is where you determine your type of transfer. Local network, these are some of the ones we mentioned. But we're going to choose FTP. Then your FTP host name. And it normally looks something like that. FTP is normally included in the file name. In this case, we're using the home tutorial site. So ftp2.hometutorials.com. If there is a host directory that it's put in, that's where we'd put it. Right there. Maybe it's under um, a certain folder. That's where we'd put it. This is our FTP login. Here we'd enter. And you can hit the check mark here, obviously, if you don't want to keep entering it. Now here is where you want to start to do some testing. Because at first, you can leave everything to default, but um, there's no guarantee that it's going to work. So that's why it might have to toggle a few things. For instance, I was having an issue originally because use IPv6 transfer mode was not checked and it kept disconnecting. I knew that the, the host name was correct, the login and password correct, but when I hit test like we're doing right now, it would not connect. So, and right now it says OK. It was successful. And it'll tell you, you know, host uh, dropped, and you know, it'll give you an error if it doesn't connect. So if it doesn't, try checking some of these boxes or checking with your provider to see what some of these settings are on the server that you're uploading to. So you might have to check use passive FTP, use IPv6 as I had to do. If you're going behind a firewall, you may have to change your firewall settings here. Another thing you can toggle under server compatibility, use FTP, 
FTP performance optimization. You notice how it says deselect this option if Dreamweaver cannot connect to your server. So there's something you can try unchecking if you're having problems connecting. But once you have your test working, you're set. And in this case, our test did work. And this is automatically checked, maintain synchronization. Now here's something that will be very, very useful to you. Automatically upload files to server on save. So you don't even have to go in and manually do it like we're about to do. And then enable file check in and check out. That's if multiple people are uploading or modifying the site. You would check out a file and it couldn't be used by the other person. Um, otherwise, two people might be modifying the same file at the same time and causes issues. But we're not going to get into that. So let's hit OK. We've got those are only now we've set up the local site and the remote site. Now before we actually we can hit done here. Before we actually make it go live, we may want to make a couple checks and balances. So if you look here. Remember we said we can look at the remote view. So if we already had files on there, we could go and look at the remote. But this is what we're looking for. Check browser compatibility. Because people are going to be using Firefox um, and other browsers, Netscape. And you want to make sure that the page you've created or pages are compatible with most browsers. So if we click Check Compatibility, and then click the top one. It'll go through and see it'll tell you in this case no issues were detected so it would tell you and then you could get a possible solution to it. Um, link checking you can go through and find broken links check links in current document like so one total doesn't say that um, there's any issues FTP log, it shows the, the, the uh, uploads I've done previously, which can be useful. Server debug. Validation. Now, I already ran this earlier, but this will double check all the code. Very useful to do before you go live. So, validate current document or va validate the entire um, site or validate selected files in site. It's up to you. So I'm just going to validate current document. And you notice it said this information on the information page that we've created here. The tag name embed, not found in currently active versions, blah, blah, blah. But we don't know for sure if that's going to cause issues at this point. So I'm going to ignore it. So now at this point, we can publish. So file and save to remote server. It's as simple as that. It's connecting to the site, which we already put in there. This is the file name, information page. And we can leave this where it is because we've already told it where to FTP to, so don't make any changes up there. And then just hit save. It's going to say that page already exists on the server because I've already uploaded it before. Do you want to replace it? And oftentimes, if you are going to do manual uploads, um, it's going to say this. It's going to say, do you want to overwrite the existing one? Well, obviously, if you've updated it, you want to overwrite. We're going to click Yes. It says, put dependent files. You can change this preference in the site category of the preferences dialog. Um, obviously, you don't have to read this every time, but I'm going to say Yes. And now you can see it putting each of the files. And notice over here, you see them moving too putting them out to the web. All right. You can click this to see the full activity window. File activity complete. You can save the log. You can hide it, close it, whatever you want to do. And now we are published. So now let's go online. There we go.
we are live. So it was an internet connection problem I was having there. But there was our page, our information page, and there's our flash video that came up and our form. Everything's live. So it's as simple as after you've been working on the local site, got everything in there that you want, then you go in, edit, create your remote site, put in your transfer information, in this case FTP, and then you could do that save, that upload upon save, or go manually, as we did here, save to remote server. And that's, that's the simplest you're going to see it as far as publishing to the web. So do some experimentation, and you will be comfortable in no time.